A uh, very warm welcome to everybody that's made that out to the hall tonight, uh, this afternoon. But, uh, we've been, in the last few uh, Sundays, been looking at the stories uh, of how God has uh, interacted in people's lives that uh, meet here, and uh, it's my turn this week. Uh, as most people in the hall know, and perhaps a few online as well, uh, my name's Paul. I've never actually asked my parents, uh, but I've always assumed I was named after Paul in the Bible. My dad's nodding, so that, that must be correct. To, I that or he's using sign language, I don't know. To, well, I cannot claim uh, to have had the same Damascus Road experience that Paul had. He was interacted in a, a very unique and special way uh, that meant he could not avoid uh, having to come to terms with who Jesus was and what that meant for him. Uh, there was no bright lights or loud voices calling out of heaven when I became a Christian. What there was, was a tape and a toilet. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a home where my father and mother were both Christians. I had an older sister and I had two younger brothers. It was a happy family, and when I was still very young, I would be taken to church <coughs> on Sundays with my parents. I would sit in Sunday school, and I would learn stories from the Bible. You, uh, you would have uh, had to ask the leaders uh, if I was attentive or if I was well behaved. I shall not incriminate myself uh, here. Uh, my sister, uh, she was given an audio cassette. And I'm sure there's some people in the hall that don't even know what that is. It's old technology for uh, audio uh, recording. The, I was going to say they're like an old version of CDs, but I don't think CDs are, are still a thing nowadays. The, anyway, there was a, a cassette of a fictional Christian story, a singing computer called Kobe, and I actually still have uh, the the music and uh, script from the, the audio cassette here. The, the, the singing computer Colby, he had a club where young Christians could spend time together and do the, young, uh, the things that young people would do. Uh, and they have an interaction, this club has an interaction with another young boy who had a very high opinion of himself. He went to church with his parents and his life was going pretty well. He actually had his own TV show and thought that that was a pretty big thing. It made him special and he thought that people should treat him well because of it. And I could certainly appreciate his desire for material things, for money, for fame, for special treatment. His attitude towards himself rubbed one of the Colby group up the wrong way until she reacted with harsh words and retorted in bitterness. This is something even I, young though I was, could understand. I could understand what it was to think highly of yourself and your own abilities. I did not like being bad at things. And I would build up things that I was good at and make them important and belittle the skills that I was no good at, even if it meant hurting others. I knew what it was to be harsh to people who had made me feel small or made me feel shame. I knew all too well what it was like to have people who were Christians who, when trying to correct me, had made me feel shame and made me dislike them because of it. As the story continues, the Christian who had made the boy feel small apologised. And the boy appreciates that a Christian is not about being good, but about being forgiven. This prompts him to acknowledge his own failure before God and ask to be forgiven of God, thus becoming a Christian. This worked around in my mind for some time. I knew that my parents were Christians and I suspected that my older sister was as well. All my aunts and uncles were Christians, as were my grandparents. They all made the very sensible step of getting their lives right with God. 
And yet here I was, still thinking that having a better bike or a nice car when I was older would make me happy. Eventually I found myself <coughs> lying in bed, unable to sleep, which is a very rare thing for me, as anyone who knows me well will attest to. I decided I would have to take the step of becoming a Christian. Not here, where family were asleep in the bed next to me, so I went to the only other place in the house that a young boy could go late at night without getting in trouble. I went to the toilet. It's just a toilet, a small hand sink and a sinner looking for God. I could not think of the words to use, so I borrowed them from the boy in the story. I couldn't remember them all, but that didn't really matter. My heart cried out to God and he knew what I meant. I asked for the forgiveness of the sins I had committed. I cried out for his help. It was there on the floor of the upstairs toilet that I became a Christian. Not on a road in a Middle Eastern city. I was alone, not with travelling companions. There was no bright lights from heaven, but a solitary for to walk follow. But the effect was the same. I was no longer a sinner. I was saved by grace. I was still a child. I had lots of growing up to do, and that's probably not changed. But my destiny had changed. My position before God had changed. My life would never be the same. Now that I knew what I was, I crawled back into bed that night. Peace in my soul, that was the big change I had between entering and leaving the toilet.